Hi, I'm Richard Hearn, and uh, since I left ATO some seven years ago, um, my life has been taken up by being involved entirely in uh, responsible tourism efforts in the Himalayas and Ethiopia and other places. And uh, I've come back to ATO this year to see how things are going, and uh, I thought I'd take the moment to have a chat with Derek to see how the association is. So how is the association, Derek? You've just come to the end of another conference. Any highlights for you? Yes, I mean, I've been chairman for a few years now since Richard handed over the reins to me, uh, and it's been quite an interesting ride. We've gone through a recession in 2008 through till perhaps this year. Uh, and two things struck me about the conference this year. One was the fact that there's an incredible mood of optimism uh, pervading the conference. All the operators there are really feeling that you know, 2013 has been a good year, 2014 should be better. We haven't seen that sort of buzz now for a few years. And the second thing is that the um, ATO affiliates, our business partners, have been much more integrated into the business sessions this year. And that's worked really well for them because we were able to understand their knowledge and their skill sets. And it's worked for the operators because they got to know the affiliates better. So that coming together of the business partners and the operators, I think, marked really for me one of the highlights of, of this conference. Well, that's great. Um, I mean, I noticed clearly with the gap, lots of new faces. Um, could you could you tell me a little bit about the, the nature of new members and who they are and, and where the association is going? I had a feeling of excitement. Yeah, I think there's a renaissance really. I mean, we've we've had quite a few new members, uh, and as always, there's a kind of a dichotomy here. Some members have joined primarily to work with the ATO specialist travel agents because they deal mostly with travel agents and that's really their raison d'etre for joining the association. Um, other people have joined for a radically different reason, that is because they're, they're quite a small business, a developing business, and they're at a stage where they appreciate the mentoring, the networking that will help them as they grow within the travel business and they can learn from the stalwarts of the business who have been operating for a number of years. So we kind of got two types of new members. Um, I was very impressed to hear the story from Gambia experience um, and for me it resonated in that not only had they uh, been involved in helping various charities but they made it central to their business. Do you think this is something that other companies should look to to the future? Is it, is it part of commercial activity for the future? I think the word, yes, I think the word that I would pick up on that you use there is commercial. For a long time, as, as you will remember, Richard, um, it was seen that anything to do with sustainable tourism, anything to do with helping the communities from which we earn our living, uh, was perhaps a very nice thing to do, um, but it didn't have anything to do with the bottom line. It wasn't profitable, it wasn't commercial, it didn't help you in terms of your business and the bottom line. Um, I think the Gambia experience illustrated so well that if you get yourself involved in the local communities, give to them, help them, it can relate, uh, reflect incredibly positively on your business and it can be a very positive commercial move. I think a lot of the operators there who listen to the Gambia experience, I think will go back and start doing the same thing. That was quite a buzz. Yeah. Um, very unfair question now to ask you. There you are. On, on the end of a, of a conference, and I know how exhausting these things are. But looking forward to 2014, you've, you've had a conference. Any thoughts on, on how you might put it together next year, the, the sort of things that members have enjoyed, not enjoyed? What, what, what makes a conference work? Okay. Well, two part question, really. What makes an ATO conference work is it, it's very much uh, two or three days of people being together the whole time. We tend to be just in one hotel, one, maybe two hotels, and not half a dozen hotels as at many conferences. And people are working and playing together uh, very closely. You get to know all the delegates at an NATO conference very, very well. Uh, so that's what makes an NATO conference different. What we'll look at for next year, because we can always learn, is more integration of business partners, for certain. I think yet more breakout sessions because we didn't have quite as many as I would have liked sessions where the members talk. For me, a conference where all the ATO delegates just listen to speakers from outside, yes, that's nice, but if that's all it is, 
then our members who are the heartbeat of the association are not contributing their own ideas. We had a little session towards the end of, of this morning where members did say what we think, but I think we've got to do more of that. So we can always learn and always improve. I, I would echo that because having, having sat through the conference in a very relaxed way, not having to be involved at all, and we had some great speakers, but for me the memorable moments came from membership participation, from hearing what the exciting things that, that members were up to, but also the frank and free exchange of information between members, and I think that is exceptional for ATO, absolutely exceptional, and that has always been the case. Yeah, I've run out of questions now. <laughs> and perhaps, um, Derek, you could ask about uh, What's how, how about? things have changed. How, how is it in the old kids' <laughs> Right, you're editing that bit. OK, we'll edit that bit. <laughs> right, here we go, three, two, one. Actually, I have one question for Richard. Um, you've kind of answered this, but I'm going to put you on the spot anyway. You've been out of the loop for, for a number of years now, uh, and you've come back in, so I'm sure you've got a snapshot of what's different now, a few years later than when you were running What's different? Well, I mean, first of all, I'm going to answer that by saying what was the same, and, and the same was the camaraderie, uh, which, is, which is why I always came to ATO, why I enjoyed ATO, and why it was so much fun to be back this time. I, I came slightly anxious because um, I hadn't noticed much about ATO, I hadn't paid much attention, um, and, and I wondered what was going on. And I, I have frankly been really quite astonished at what I feel is a groundswell of the re-emergence of really great specialist operators. And I think it wouldn't be unfair to say watch this space because I think there are going to be some really creative companies that are quite small now that are going to grow and be exceptional. And, and where, where, is, where are new ideas being generated in the outbound tourism industry of, of our country? It's here in ATO. The, the, the big boys um, have reached a stage of, um, I, I think they're tired. I think, I think they are so corporate that uh, they, they've, they've stopped innovating. Um, and we're back in a phase where we perhaps were 15, 20 years ago, where the innovation once again is here in this powerhouse. So I found it very, very exciting. I think I'd just like to add that for me it was a privilege to take over the association, Richard. He, he built it up, developed it, and made it a forward-thinking organisation. And it was a hard act to follow to be honest, uh, And I just hope that we can take it forward, make ATO more relevant, more important, uh, and a bigger player than ever in the, the tour operating scene of the UK. So thank you, Richard. Thank you, Derek. And uh, let's look forward to the future. <laughs>